Do you know which document was signed in 1941 that became the foundation for which a new world order has been continuously built? It's rather important because internationalists are now calling for a new document to be signed in order to get their agenda back on track once President Trump stops dismantling it via his wrecking ball of Americanism. We'll discuss these latest revelations in this episode of Analysis Behind the News, where we provide the perspective that you can use to restore American liberty and independence. One of the main architects of the New World Order is the Council on Foreign Relations. Those that have membership in the John Birch Society know that JBS has been exposing the CFR and its anti-American agenda for decades. Even before President Trump was elected, the CFR was lamenting how his Americanism would affect the global order. After all, for years and through both Republican and Democratic administrations, the CFR's globalist agenda of building world government through unelected, unaccountable world organizations went largely unabated. A couple weeks ago, the CFR's foreign affairs publication posted an online article calling for a new Atlantic Charter. It specifically stated, on August 14, 1941, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill secretly met aboard a ship off the Newfoundland coast. The two leaders discussed war strategy, but more importantly, they laid out their common vision for a post-war world in a joint statement later known as the Atlantic Charter. The Charter articulated shared principles and cemented not only the transatlantic alliance, but also the foundation of a world order that has endured for more than 70 years. They articulate what has changed thanks to President Trump by stating, Trump has posed an open threat on an entirely new scale to the partnership that Roosevelt and Churchill once immortalized. The current U.S. president has antagonized European leaders, fomented mistrust, and cast doubt on the value of the relationship itself. According to the New American, part of the American delegation in the 1941 negotiations desperately wanted the charter to include explicit mention of a system of world order, and the original draft of the charter did call for the creation of an effective international organization. As the magazine article explained, the Atlantic Charter was the kernel around which the United Nations was formed, that its aim was the submergence of sovereign states, including the United States, under an all-powerful world government, was ably explained as early as February 13, 1943, by New York Congressman Joseph Clark Baldwin. Baldwin, a supporter of the Charter, explained how under its terms national sovereignty would be diminished. Local police forces obviously should be reduced as state and national police protection is increased, Baldwin said in a speech to the Foreign Policy Association of Pennsylvania. So our national armed forces can and should be reduced as soon as a permanent international police force is set up. The United Nations founding came a couple of years later in 1945, followed by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and a whole host of UN affiliates. Mention of the Atlantic Charter is like a dog whistle to globalist ears. Foreign Affairs, the CFR organ, suggested in its online article that U.S. and European leaders should reinvigorate the partnership with a new transatlantic agreement and council a 21st century Atlantic Charter, equipped to handle not only today's, but also tomorrow's crises. They also suggested, the transatlantic alliance must be reinvigorated, but modern demands on the partnership outstrip its current framework and require new structures. For this reason, Western leaders should draw up a 21st century version of the Atlantic Charter call it the Transatlantic Strategic Partnership Agreement, TSPA. The Atlantic Charter lay out a vision that established institutions such as the United Nations, NATO, and the European Union. Likewise, the United States and Europe now need to update their vision 
and establish new institutions to meet the new moment. For those Americans interested in preserving sovereignty, this should be a huge red flag since we've seen what the EU has become, a bloated bureaucratic layer of unaccountable and unelected government that forces its members to adopt ruinous globalist policies. A little over 10 years ago, we helped to distribute a documentary exposing the EU. The DVD was written and produced by Philip Day from Great Britain. The DVD was called The Real Face of the EU and featured none other than Nigel Farage, a member of the European Parliament at the time, who eventually went on to become head of the Brexit party and led the movement to get out. Mr. Farage said in the video that he said he had voted up to 450 times in a span of about 80 minutes, not knowing what's in the legislation they were voting on. He said that EU civil servants presented him with a list of how he should vote. He concluded, It is an absolute farce. It is a complete sham masquerading as democracy. Mr. Day appeared in the video and documented that the political and economic integration of the members of the EU was done in stealth and had stolen sovereignty away from all EU members. And this is why the UK elected to get out of the EU through Brexit. Yet the CFR and its many globalist supporters advocate for more of this bureaucracy to address, as they say, wider concerns like climate change, China, Russia development, or cyberspace, as the CFR article mentioned. If you think that it's hard to fight City Hall now, wait until we get roped into an analytic union with the EU. Individual rights will be granted by government, and government will be the final arbiter of those rights. As much as the article disparages Trump for standing up to these global bullies, the article also praises presidential candidate Joe Biden for his call to work closer with Europe. No matter who wins the presidential election, the globalists will push their agenda wherever and whenever there is opportunity. With President Trump, that opportunity is through trade agreements that are largely negotiated by globalists. With Joe Biden, the opportunities will be present in all of his policies and will be as plentiful as they were when President Obama was in office. Yet the John Birch Society will be out front exposing these opportunities in hopes to recruit you into our organization to help protect American liberty and independence. If this topic has stirred your interest, let us recommend the small book, International Merger by Foreign Entanglements by Mr. Arthur R. Thompson. It details the many tools that globalists are using to build the new world order. Get your copy today and pass it on to someone else as well. Then apply for membership in the John Birch Society if you're not already a member. Links are in the video description. Who do you know that cares about freedom and independence? Because the time to act is now. I'm Bill Hahn for the John Birch Society, and until next time, stay informed, stay active, and stay safe, patriots. Thank <laughs> you.